Good morning everyone. My name is Elizabeth Kendall and I'm the director of a new initiative at Griffith called Griffith Inclusive Futures, Reimagining Disability. And I'm very pleased to be here today with Gary, uh, Gary Allen, who I'll introduce to you in a moment. But um, I'm also fortunate to be a board member of enabled.bip. Uh, which has been quite a journey for us over the last few years and we're just really pleased to be here today. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome our distinguished guests today, uh, people, all of you here, who have helped us to be where we are. But particularly, I'd like to thank the Honourable Dr Stephen Miles, MP, who is Deputy Premier of Queensland and Minister for just about everything else. So I, just, <laughs> I have to read this to you. <laughs> Minister for State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning and Minister Assisting on Infrastructure for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. So that's a, a big workload and he's a very busy man and there was a moment there where we thought we weren't going to have him today <laughs> but we, we have him and we're very grateful, thank you for the time. To our Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Carolyn Evans, thank you so much for making the time to be here and we know how busy your schedule is as well. We're also very grateful to you for the environment that you're creating at Griffith that's allowing things like this to happen and really promoting disability. So, thank you. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge here at Griffith, we have Professor Paul Scuffer, who's the director of MHIQ, the Men Menzies Health Institute of Queensland, a sponsor of Enabled. Professor Peter Binks, who is our director of engagement and industry, and I think I got that back to front, but uh, it's a very important role that helps Griffith to be the collaborator that it is with lots of industry. So we're very grateful to you for attending. I'd like to also thank Mr. Ashley Rusker, who's going to shortly give us our welcome to country. And I really appreciate the fact that we've been allowed to host this event on beautiful Mianjin. And uh, shortly I will invite Ashley to come up and do the official welcome. I want to thank our sponsors, the beautiful Linda Doolan and Bradley Grieve from Mabel. Mabel are funding this event and Mabel is uh, one of those organisations that just loves anything innovative and really gets behind new initiatives that do things differently. And congratulations, I believe you've had 8 million care hours now tick over on your platform. So that's a fantastic achievement, thank you. Um, of course, Dr Gary Allen, <laughs> CEO and friend to many of you in this room, CEO of Enable.VIP and uh, a very long-term staff member at Griffith University who we've all relied on over the years to help us with our ethics applications and to ensure that Griffith is one of the best, most well-respected institutions for its human research ethics and its animal research ethics as well. So, so Gary, thank you for bringing us all here today. Um, I'd like to also just welcome the rest of you because you're all important. You're here because you've been a significant part. We have a number of our board members here. Put up your hand, enabled VIP board members and our supporters um, who really help us to do what we do. And I think um, there have been many times in our journey, haven't there, Gary, <laughs> when we thought we couldn't do it anymore. But we are actually there now, and this event is a fantastic thing for us. We have now an almost sustainable organisation that, uh, that will be around for a long time. Um, so can I, first of all, invite Ashley to come up and do the official welcome to country and kick this event off. Uh, hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ashley Rusker and I'm a descendant of the Yagara people. Now for those of you who may not know, the Yagara people are actually the local tribal group 
which occupied the Brisbane region and surrounding areas. So stretching all the way from the map of the Brisbane River right out to the Great Dividing Ranges at the foothills of the Warwick and Toowoomba Range, back up towards the Caboolture River and as far down south as the Logan River. Now within this tribe there are several different subclans. There are the Jagara, the Yagara, the Yugurupu and also the Turrbal people. And these different subclans will make up a much larger Yagara speaking language group. Now, if you didn't know, within Australia we have over 350 different Aboriginal tribes or Aboriginal countries. And each one of these tribal groups will have their own set of customs, their own laws, their own traditions, and in most cases, it will even have their own languages. And some could have up to two or three different dialects of their own language. Which I think is why we held such an emphasis on what we're doing here today at Welcome to Country. And along with the Welcome to Country, there are various different ceremonies, such as the smoking ceremony, or even the handing over of a message stick. Now, if you've never seen a message stick before, it's a little bit of wood that's probably about the size of this microphone. And it'll have certain markings or carvings on it to depict a reason as to why someone may have entered into your land. Now, if you were caught on someone else's land and you weren't welcomed in by that tribe and you didn't offer up a message stick, there's a very, very good chance that you'll be speared right there on the spot. So it's a good thing that we've got the telephone these days. <laughs> <laughs> and we go for a visit to the neighbours and we just bring up. But on behalf of the, the tribal groups that I mentioned, the Yagara, the Yagara, the Yugurupu, and also the Turrbal people. I just wanted to see if the subtitles were keeping up. <laughs> but um, on behalf of our people, I'd like to extend a warm welcome here to everyone. And just say on behalf of our people, Yiri Rangamari. In the Ganari na Bajara, Manangamindu na Nyabirli na Nyabayami Chara. Which means we're all welcome together here on this country. And may God and all of our ancestors guide us in peace. Thank you. Ashley and the subtitles did not keep up. <laughs> um, I, I now want to introduce you to Dr Gary Allen who needs no introduction whatsoever for most of you. Uh, you know him quite well. Um, Gary is an ethicist actually and uh, he's, he has a background in education and social sciences. Uh, he's a very long term employee at Griffith and as I said earlier, he has established our ethics, human research ethics and animal research ethics processes. And really they are the envy of many, many other universities. And as there's probably not a day goes by that you just get a call from another university to say, help us set up ours. So, uh, so Gary's done an amazing job and researchers really feel that uh, the ease and the integrity with which that process happens at Griffith. So that's very, very important. Um, I do also want to acknowledge that Gary is part of an international group of experts in ethics, a very small group of experts who are called on all the time to, to deliver their advice across Australasia. So he's a he's very, uh, very well-respected member of Griffith's community and uh, he's also a very firm advocate for MS Queensland. And uh, I will hand over to you now, Gary, to talk for a little while, and I think Gary's also done a recording for us. So, thank you, Gary. Well, good work, this uh, is loud enough for everybody here. Uh, um, just want to thank so many uh, friends and supporters that have come along today. It's been a long journey, but uh, your support has made all the difference. Thanks, John. Um, uh, I should acknowledge um, Fiverr.com that gave us some seed funding at the beginning of the journey. Um, I'd also like to um, thank um, the Queensland Government through DSPT that's provided us with essential support, as well as, of course, acknowledging the great support I've received from Griffith. That's made a world of difference to enable.vip. Um, so we'll play a short recording shortly that um, will give you an overview about the platform but afterwards I'd be delighted to have a chat. So at this stage we're doing a soft launch so our free services are available now. Um, so we'll talk you through what those will be and we're just talking to the um, um, NDA just in terms of the paid services. So thank you all very much for coming on today.
nothing quite as disconcerting as seeing a recording of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> doing that, I should also acknowledge that we are recording this event and uh, we're recording it for people who can't attend because of COVID. And I just wanted to make the point that uh, COVID in uh, our world, our disabled community, is very significant. So even though we're able to sit here and enjoy a, an in-person event and not be terrified, that's not the case for most people in our community. So many people forego coming to events like this. So we are recording um, and we can try to have live stream if we can, but we're recording today so that people can watch it later. So I'd like to also acknowledge those people as guests. Thank you, John. Thanks, <laughs> For you some time. <laughs> Thank you. It's Gary Allen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Enable VIP, a virtual business incubator for students with disability. So I'm just very excited to launch the platform. So it's a soft launch in this at the moment, in so much as we're providing some free services right now. The paid services, we're just working out the details with the NDIA. So the mission of the platform is to support, um, sorry, is to establish nurture and support community practice in the Australian disability entrepreneurship space. The goal is after six months of paid membership of the platform, individuals will have made. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, well, while that's starting up again, um, around 40% of Australian groups with disability live on or near the poverty line. So part of um, the goal we've enabled for our is helping people to generate some money for themselves. But more than financial independence, it's about social connection, dignity and agency. So what we're trying to do is actually create a space in which people can be engaged with the wider community and the Australian workforce. And um, you cannot blame my Mac for what's now happening. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on and come back to that? Perhaps? So. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. It takes a bit of time. So sorry, to it's up. going to take a minute to read. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Well, I won't go back over there. What I'd like to do now is invite our, our guest, who we didn't think we'd have, um, the Honourable Dr. Stephen Miles, to come and speak. Oh, Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be able to be with you. Can I to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're gathered on and thank uh, Ashley for, uh, he always does such a, a warm and um, uh, welcoming welcome and acknowledgement of country. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and pay my uh, respects to uh, all of their elders and any First Nations people here and uh, perhaps just take a moment to reflect on the unique challenges of uh, First Nations people uh, who also suffer from a disability, live with a disability uh, or, uh, or an illness. Um, uh, I think most importantly, Gary's family. It's so wonderful to see uh, you all again and all uh, looking, um, looking so well. It's been uh, too long. It's been. Uh, it's great to be. Uh, it's great to be hanging out with Gary and celebrating another one of his uh, fantastic achievements. To everyone from Griffith University, uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor uh, uh, Shufum. Have I said that right? Paul Shupham, um, uh, Elizabeth Candle, Professor Elizabeth Candle, Associate Professor uh, Naomi Bird Thistle. Um, uh, could I, in acknowledging the Griffith Uni folk, just say how impressed I've been with uh, them as an employer over such a long period of time, their support for uh, Gary uh, through all of his endeavours, uh, including en enabled uh, uh, VIP. 
Uh, it might terrify you to know that at one stage Gary had me on your ethics committee. Um, <laughs> I think the appeal of which was I always voted in favour of the recommendation in the minutes, uh, and Gary always wanted to make sure he had the numbers. Um, <laughs> and uh, can I also thank the team from Mabel who are sponsoring today's event. You guys pop up at the strangest of places. So it's great to see you. Um, uh, the, um, in the uh, introduction, I, I think it was uh, acknowledge that I do have a lot of jobs. I only have one boss though, and um, thank you for bearing with me as we've rescheduled uh, this event, I think, a few times, and uh, I almost wasn't able to be uh, with you, so I'm so glad that I am able to be here with you, because over the last few years, Gary's kept me very regularly uh, updated, uh, usually by text, on how uh, this project has been going, and uh, seeing if I can uh, connect him up with any government programs and grants and that kind of thing and so it's been uh, really great to uh, hear uh, and see it come to uh, fruition. As I was thinking uh, so much of my interest in um, uh, inclusivity and uh, support for people living with a disability and indeed uh, healthcare has come from knowing Gary for so long. It's uh, it's not until you've tipped someone out of a wheelchair crossing Edward Street <laughs> trying to get from the Victory to the Stock Exchange uh, that you realise that our city is not nearly as flat as you think it should be. Um, uh, it's not until you've had to uh, hobble down 32 flights of stairs during a fire evacuation at 2am in Vancouver uh, that you realise the, 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 some of the unique challenges that come with um, uh, not being able to get around like, like the rest of us, uh, like the rest of us can, and um, it really struck me how we could do such a better job of making uh, our city much more accessible and easy to get people around. But with unemployment as low as it is, pretty much as low as it can get, and as low as it's been since we used the current statistical method, uh, getting people uh, able to participate uh, is not just a uh, nice thing to have, not, not just the right thing to do, but also an economic imperative. And so uh, the more we can drive up uh, participation, the better, and that's what makes this project enable, enabled VIP uh, so necessary. There are 900 startups in Queensland right now at a value of $4 billion, and wouldn't it be great for us to make, uh, to ensure that those kind of opportunities are available to every uh, single Queenslander? Uh, that's a key part of our government's innovation strategy. But if you think about over the next 10 years, wouldn't it be wonderful if in 10 years' time our city was truly accessible? Um, people with a disability could contribute to the fullness of their uh, capacity um, to our workforce and to their communities. Because um, in 10 years' time, we'll be hosting the biggest celebration of inclusivity, the 2032 Brisbane Paralympic Games. And wouldn't it be just an incredible legacy if uh, over the next 10 years we could focus on, uh, focus on these things? I mean, imagine being able to get uh, seamlessly uh, from uh, the Gabba to here at South Bank, uh, over to Broome Street and the new venue there, uh, indeed, uh, even better if you could keep going through um, uh, Victoria Park, the Hurston Precinct, all the way out to the Athletes Village at, uh, at North Shore. And they're the kinds of accessibility things we're going to need to deal with. You know, by uh, 2032, I make my pledge that you won't have to use the goods lift to get up the Gabba Stadium. The new stadium will be properly and fully accessible. Um, I, d I also wanted to just... Uh, make a couple of remarks about the NDIS because I think it's become fashionable to criticise the NDIS, particularly amongst those who never really supported it in the first place. But uh, the NDIS is uh, critical to achieving the aims that uh, Gary and Enabled VIP and uh, Griffith Uni have uh, with, this, uh, with this project. And uh, for the opponents of the NDIS to uh, latch on to the fact that there are some dodgy operators out there seeking to use it uh, to make some fast uh, fast cash really is about in undermining the entire system and the fact that there are some people out there who will do that well, that's not the fault of people with a disability and it shouldn't be used against them and the fact that it's now costs twice as much to make your home accessible as it did 
a couple of years ago, well, that's not the fault of people with a disability either, and we shouldn't let the opponents of the NDIS uh, use it to undermine uh, the kinds of supports that uh, people with a dis disability rightly deserve and a society like Australia should rightly deliver. So thank you, Gary, for taking me on uh, your journey, uh, not just over the last 20-something years, but also uh, as you've developed an able to VIP, it's uh, been such a, a wonderful honour and uh, I'm really chuffed to be a part of it. Can't wait to see where you go. quick session is just a really quick overview of the various features of the NAPL.VIP. So we're providing free services accessible to all the strengths with disability, their carers and others we have an established connection to the Australian disability community, as well as some paid services. So we'll just talk through those features now. So one core element is the blog. So there will be a monthly blog post um, covering essential um, items or information in terms of establishing and operating an uh, endeavour that is successful, sustainable in both senses of the word and resilient. So the blog posts are written by and written for Australians with disability and cover topics that would be very useful for the establishment and operation. And that material is free in terms of it's available to all members of the platform. Resource library is another core component of the platform. So the resource library has got there are items we have basically once a day that covers once again topics about establishment and operation. Those are freely accessible to all members, um, including of course those free members of the platform. Um, the platform also includes some paid items, so the resource sheets which will provide further detail on some of those issues. Also, there we are some um, template documents that people can download and use for themselves. So a type template operating um, tracking sheet for your money as well as a template invoice. Those are only accessible to paid members of the platform. Um, monthly webinars are another core feature. So every month there'll be a new webinar. So the first 45 minutes of those webinars will be accessible for free to all our members, including our free members. Um, the last 15 minutes of those webinars will be an NGOS expert talking about how people might use their NGOS plan to 
pursue the matters discussed by the speaker in the webinar. The discussion board, which we call After the Tribe, is another core component platform, so that's a peer support discussion board. It's internal, so only members of the platform can access um, that space. Uh, three members of the platform can view, read um, all of the content, the, the discussion on that board, but only paid members have got the functionality to be able to ask and answer questions or write their own uh, thread to go in the board. It's a moderated um, resource, so the leadership team of the platform moderates the content that goes into that discussion board. Some extra items with the uh, platform, so uh, there will be capacity building modules. Um, Naomi um, will be speaking um, shortly about um, those modules. Um, those are exclusively for paid members of the platform. Um, it's a suite of resources we think would be incredibly valuable. Another element is the Bazaar, which is a online marketplace for Australians with disability. You get, you'll get a store within that market space as part of your paid membership where you can promote your services or the items that you're, you'll be selling. Um, it will be linked through to um, Fiverr.com in terms of to do transactions. Another paid element by the platform is our one to one disability entrepreneurship support. So that will be in the form of a video email or phone catch-up um, to chat to an advisor that would be able to ask you questions or provide you with other support and that's a paid element of the platform. In terms of the cost though, as I said, folk with disability, their carers and others with established connection can join the platform for free and get access to the free areas of the platform. Um, if you want to get paid um, access to the material, um, it's $10 a month to become a paid member. Uh, if you want to access that one-to-one -one advice and support, it's $62.17 um, to um, uh, value, value yourself with that support. So that's a very quick overview of the platform. On the screen now are um, my contact details. Um, as well as the website of Enable VIP, our YouTube channel, and our LinkedIn page where we put development news, which is a great way of keeping up to date with what we're up to. Uh, on the screen now, you'll see there's the link to join the platform, whether it's a free or a paid member. There's also the link to actually access pricing information about the platform. And you also see now that there is a link for our email address as well as our mobile number. In case you have any questions, we'd be thrilled to hear from you. So if you want to have a chat, please do reach out. with Gary 
Uh, so we have funding support from both the business group and the health group um, and Menzies Health Institute Queensland. And what we're doing is uh, building educational offerings that we can keep giving to members over time. Uh, all these small businesses and micro businesses, so many of them fail after a lot of investment of time and energy and we want to prevent that happening. And we have some testers in the room who have been using the platform over the last year and, um, and they're really enjoying it. So I think there's definitely something important here that we have to keep building and we need to keep making fresh content available for people. So Naomi is uh, an expert in small business and entrepreneurship and that's the content of her research. She does great work in that area. And she's devoting a lot of her time to building this content that can be put up onto the platform for our users from here on. So let's have a quick look at, uh, at Naomi, if we can get it. And if we can't, we're going to morning tea. <laughs> Thanks to Mabel. University. This presentation will provide you with a brief overview of the building workforce capacity workshops that have been designed by Griffith University staff through the Inclusive Futures Beacon and in association with Griffith Business School. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land. Griffith University acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting and pays respect to the elders, past and present and emerging, and extends that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Griffith University is a values-based university and is supporting people with disability through investing heavily in or capability in disability and rehabilitation research, which is why we can partner with Enabled.VIP in this important way. One way Griffith University is investing in disability is through the economic, human, and social capital investment in the Inclusive Futures Reimagining Disability Beacon. This beacon is a university-led collaboration between people with disability and key research, education, industry, health, and social organizations. We aim to solve the most pressing real-world challenges in the area of disability and rehabilitation. We have created a series of online self-completed modules that members of Enabled.VIP and the Inclusive Futures Beacon Reimagining Disability will be granted access to. The content covers topic areas like personal branding, pitching, lean approaches to startups and many other areas. Members of Enabled.VIP and others will be invited to attend an online workshop that covers these particular topics. So let's explore two of those particular topics. One of the topics is personal branding. This is actually what we call a hot topic at the moment. This personal branding is actually, um, when you go into Google, uh, returns nearly 2 million results. What is important to note is that you don't create a personal brand, but you develop a brand of your own true self. And then you put it out there as the authentic you. Having a personal brand helps to build trust with your audience and your clients. And as the saying goes, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Being the public face of your business allows you to build trust with potential and existing customers, even if you're not speaking to them directly. Thus, strategically expanding your network translates to an extended pool of prospective clients. You should then be considering to do podcasts, interviews, webinars, seminars, speak at large conferences, speak at small conferences, panels, etc. And this helps people to get to know you and then, if they know you, they trust you, and then they would trust the company. So this particular capacity building course and workshop will bring participants through the development of their personal brand and be confident to develop it through various mediums. 
So this here is an example of what uh, members of the neighbourhood of VIP and members of the Inclusive Futures Reimagining Disability Beacon would engage with. So they would be introduced to the topic and within that introduction they would then have a mini lecture and that mini lecture is available for download and it includes closed captions and will also include sign language as well. And then we go through the theoretical aspect of building your personal brand. And this is empowering members of Enable.VIP and other people with disabilities to be confident in developing that personal brand. I guide them on a number of mini exercises to complete, to start developing the content of their personal brand. And you can see that through this particular page here. And then we scroll down and see a few more exercises they can complete at their own pace and their own time. And then we have at the very end some um, uh, posting to LinkedIn how to do that because LinkedIn is very much aligned with being able to communicate your personal brand in today's modern world and obviously other social media uh, sites as well. And then we go through, in a sense, some readings, which are available for people to download. And then a self-reflective exercise is actually uh, presented to participants. We do believe podcasts are quite important, and we need to develop role models with people with disabilities. So we have Sophie Butler here, who is a disability advocacy and body image expert as well. The second um, example of uh, the training that we are conveying through the website is a pitching for entrepreneurs um, capacity building workshop as well and self-paced content here. So pitching is actually a method of verbal communication that does involve succinctly presenting the value of your business idea to potential investors and customers. Through this, Businesses are able to acquire resources, financial aid, and also clientele. By developing verbal communication skills, such as pitching, it allows participants to improve their confidence and their ability to communicate with others. Furthermore, it does increase the likelihood of their future business or entrepreneurial ventures to succeed. So in this course, we will bring participants through the process of preparing to pitch, how to deliver an elevator pitch, and what to consider when closing the pitch. An example of the um, self-paced material that participants can engage with is here, for example. So again, topic introduction, explaining what an elevator pitch, and there is a, a number of YouTube videos that are linked to this particular topic. And also, very interesting, how to actually start a pitch. Here, uh, participants are guided on starting a pitch. But also, we need to know how to close a pitch as well. And using a method uh, delivered here by the speaker will help you to actually close the pitch with a bang, in a sense. And again, there's some mini exercises participants can engage with, as well as hearing from some Australian entrepreneurs who are based on the Gold Coast. Some are entrepreneurs with disability, some are entrepreneurs who are within the health and tech industry as well. And then there's a series of interactive resources, free resources that participants can engage with as well. And then, of course, examples are a great way to learn about pitching as well. So the platform here provides some examples to participants some interesting reading as well, and then a very short reflective activity and a synopsis of key learnings. And then each uh, participant would be invited to a workshop that's either on pitching and or on personal branding. And the recording of that workshop would actually then be uploaded here onto uh, the, the uh, platform as well. So I want to say thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. And uh, please get in touch should you wish to know more. Thank you.
beautiful rainbow crossings there. We have them on every crossing at Griffith. It's a really inclusive feeling for people to come on campus. So, um, we will finish there. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll finish there and I'd like to officially claim enabled.vip as an organisation. <laughs> and thank you all for being here. If there are any questions, Gary and I would be happy and any of our board members, happy or our testers, Happy to answer those questions. And thanks to uh, Linda and Bradley again, Mabel, for the beautiful food up the back. Please take some time to have some food. Talk to the Deputy Premier before he has to leave. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>